everyone, welcome to our show Dreams, Passion and Your Hong Kong Story. Every time on this show, we bring before you people from different walks of life who have pursued their passion and found great success in Hong Kong. Today we have with us a veteran in finance industry, someone who's a source of inspiration for many in this world, the legendary Frank Tang of Fountain West Partners. Hello Frank and welcome to our show. Thank you Jaya, thank you for inviting me. <laughs> Frank is the managing partner and CEO of Fountain West Partners, which is one of the largest China-focused private equity fund based in Hong Kong with a little over US $5 billion capital under management. Frank founded Fountain West Partners in 2007, and since then they have raised three US dollar fund and one RMB fund and have offices in Beijing, Hong Kong and Shanghai. Fountain West Partners invests in four areas, consumer, retail media, industrial, financial services, and healthcare. So Frank, tell us where are you originally from and how long have you been in Hong Kong? I was originally from Shanghai uh -huh. and uh, I have been here for about 23 uh, and a half years. Okay. So at what stage of your life, uh, you know, did you decide to become a banker? Tell us what were the key events in your life that motivated you to choose finance industry? I became a banker accidentally. I never planned for it. I was um, really? uh, studying uh, international business uh, and uh, my goal was to become a businessman traveling around the world and selling Chinese fabrics and textile products. Wow. So that was my uh, 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 you know, career girl at that time when I was in college. Uh, and uh, then I did go to a textile company in Shenzhen uh, in 1990, which was a special economic zone in China. Uh -huh. uh, and I set, helped to set up a textile factory, uh, you know, recruited workers, and uh, started to sell uh, the fabrics to Hong Kong. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, at that time, and everybody, you know, thought you know, going to uh, study abroad would be something very interesting as part of the education experience. So I, I applied for Columbia uh, University for my MBA, uh -huh. went to New York, and in 1992, I arrived in New York, and that was the time China announced that it's going to open the Chinese capital markets to international investors to allow Chinese companies to come to listing Hong Kong uh -huh. and uh, elsewhere. Wow. So, uh, without knowing it, I uh, walked on the campus with all the Wall Street banks coming to recruit anybody who can speak Chinese. Okay. So, I accidentally became a banker, uh, recruited first by Goldman Sachs as a summer intern, uh -huh. and I joined full-time after graduation in 94. What brought you to Hong Kong and then made you choose Hong Kong for you know, pursuing the rest of your financial career? So in 1994, uh, uh, Goldman recruited me to uh, be uh, uh, in the investment banking uh, uh -huh. division uh -huh. uh, with uh, an ultimate uh, a plan to come back to cover the China market. I see. So I was in New York uh, for two years working uh -huh. in the headquarters. And uh, then in 1996, uh, I was relocated back to Hong Kong. At that time, um, uh, China does not yet grant uh, investment banking licenses to uh -huh. uh, foreign companies. So Hong Kong has been a base uh, for many uh, multinational banks to operate and cover uh, the China market. I see. And when did you uh, found Fountain West? So um, I started uh, Fountain Vest in uh, two, uh, end of 2007 with uh, a number of my uh, colleague, former colleagues, uh -huh. uh, and uh, yeah, that was uh, did, that was the beginning. So did you always want to be a financial entrepreneur? Um, I think uh, the financial industry is very interesting, provides me a lot of learning and uh, there's also a sense of fulfillment mm -hmm. uh, as we witnessed and get involved in the Chinese capital markets growth, uh, you know, since uh, its very beginning. Um, and uh, being an entrepreneur at the same time is always, always a very intriguing idea. Okay. And in numerous you know, points of my time, you know, there were uh, opportunities to become an entrepreneur and uh, in uh, end of 2007, um, uh, you know, um, uh, I think I, I probably wouldn't have done it alone. Uh, so it was, uh, uh, you know, a group of uh, friends and uh, former colleagues who came together and we decided to form uh, Fountain Vest. So Frank, a lot of people want to enter, you know, private equity after they do investment banking and not everyone is so successful. 
but you actually made it really big. Can you share some tips with the audience uh, from your banking days that you think made you like really successful when you took up private equity? Uh, you're very generous, first of all, in terms of uh, describing our success. We're still uh, working very hard. Uh, uh, you know, uh, there's so much potential, and uh, uh, we're constantly learning. And frankly, that has been uh, something. Uh, you know, uh, the investment banking uh, initially provided very good uh, training about uh -huh. uh, the ability to uh, get into any new area and uh, very quickly learn uh, and uh, grasp the mo most important uh, aspect of uh, this uh, area in the business. Um, the other thing that I thought was um, very useful for me is the relentless focus on quality and details. I see. Uh, today, it's still a professional habit of me to go into any restaurant, pick up the menu, and and and, and notif not notice the typos. Well, wow. uh, I think uh, so. It, the detail orientation. <laughs> it is very uh, uh, much of a ingrained uh, in terms of uh, the uh, the initial training uh, uh, for my for my finance career. Mm -hmm. um, the third thing is. Um, the teamwork. Okay. Uh, in order to achieve something, um, uh, no matter how big or small, uh, it is critical to work with mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know um, uh, you know you know teams uh, to work with other functions very well together. So those are very good trainings for me. So tell us, what is the secret of Fountain West success? What could we say that you know the main drivers that you that you think drove you to success for Fountain West? We have. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, you know, um, being uh, very uh, focused on the China market, mm -hmm. and uh, we witnessed the growth of the Chinese uh, consumer market. We want to be very focused on it, and uh, 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 and we, you know, I think it is important to be able to uh, really uh, know the market very well, mm -hmm. uh, know uh, uh, the people very well, and know the industries very well. So I think. Uh, to be able to invest very well uh, in China is critical to develop that underground knowledge and network. So mm -hmm. that, I think that's something we continue to build. Uh, and uh, secondly, I think, uh, as I said, you know, team uh, teamwork is very, very important. I'm very fortunate to have a group of uh, partners uh, have a very, very strong team that's been working together for a very, very long time. Investing is a very long-term career, mm -hmm. and uh, to be able to you know, work together and develop uh, you know, the knowledge and experience uh, and, and learn from the lessons yes. right? And is, 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 very, is very critical. Yeah. Okay. Tell us some of the challenges that you faced in building your business. Um, I think initially it is about raising money. Okay. Uh, we uh, uh, started Fountain Vest in end of 2007 mm -hmm. when the subprime crisis uh, just started to happen and 2008 was the full-blown global financial crisis mm -hmm. where many companies went under. Right. So it was during that period of time we uh, went out to the market and tried to raise money yes. when the likes of uh, big banks on Wall Street uh, are running out of liquidity as you can imagine, uh, not to mention many other uh, companies. So uh, um, again, we were very, very lucky. There were um, uh, uh, many uh, long-term uh, investors, uh, particularly pension plans mm -hmm. and sovereign wealth funds and other uh, corporate investors who were willing to support us. The second challenge um, is brand, because uh, you know starting up a company is fun rather than working for a very big uh, multinational company. Right. On the other hand. Uh, uh, people uh, always want to uh, work with, um, you know, uh, institutions that has a strong credibility, mm -hmm. and the Asian market typically are also very brand conscious. Right. Uh, so the initial starting point uh, is is always very difficult, yeah. and we have to rely on our personal connections and credibility to get access and win, uh, you know, and 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 work with. Uh, some some great companies together. Um, now, after twelve years, um, glad to say that uh, you know the Fountain Vest brand name is very well established in the China market and mm -hmm. uh, and even internationally. So so uh, w you know um, you know we uh, we started to have some of that brand advantage, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it has been very difficult. The third, obviously, is uh, talents. In China, okay. the talent is always in shortage, mm -hmm. so it's been a consistent challenge. Uh, to find and uh, you know uh, 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 to recruit and and to be able to attract good talents to work for us, 
and to work for our portfolio companies. Okay, that brings me to my other question. You're an entrepreneur and every entrepreneur, of course, has had some failure in the life, which has been a very big lesson for them to become successful in future. Tell us about one such failure that you've had that has been a very big learning experience for you. Many <laughs> lessons <laughs> that we have learned. And, uh, you know, when we are, um, you know, uh, uh, often going back to history, look at the deals that we did not uh, make money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one issue we overlooked was uh, the macro trend. Mm -hmm. As a investment banker, we were trained to look into the details and uh, we are very good at looking at the numbers, at the fundamentals of the business. Uh, uh, but on the, on the other hand, uh, you know, the macro trend that is going on sometimes is as important or sometimes overwhelm yeah. uh, a specific company's fundamentals. So, um, um, for example, one of the companies we invested in is in the industrial capital equipment business uh, back in 2000. Uh, and, and 11 um, and uh, what we, uh, f we we like the business in terms of its large market share high mm -hmm. quality terrific customers feedback really hard working management team uh, but on the other hand what we did not realize was that uh, China was reaching somewhat of a, a cap capacity expansion peak mm -hmm. uh, in that uh, area and uh, therefore uh, it, you know uh, you know, in terms of the, the the general cycle, it started to go down in that industry, and when people are no longer spending capital, you know, uh, to expand their factories, mm -hmm. then uh, we have less revenue I see. Uh, selling that capital equipment. So um, uh, that's a lesson for us now to look at any industry. We must look at the macro trend, make sure mm -hmm. that we are indeed operating in a uh, sector that's relatively growing yeah. or at least the company is very well positioned in that uh, in, 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 a, in, a, in a growing sector it will be much easier yes. uh, to, uh, to succeed. Yeah. So being detail oriented and as well as looking at the macro focus both yes. are really important. Right. Right. So Found Invest is also um, very heavily invested in sports and so heavily invested in media brands we know you are owners of uh, Pure Fitness. I'm actually myself like a customer there. Thank you. And thank a very you. happy customer. Mm. And you also own media brands like IMAX. I mean, everybody has been to IMAX theaters. So, you know, how, what are your expansion plans of these? Uh, where do you see these, uh, these kind of investments headed in China? And how has Hong Kong been an advantage for you to be based out of here? And what are your plans for expansion of these industries, these kind of portfolios in China? We um, like uh, sports, entertainment, and the, uh, and the, and the fitness areas mm -hmm. because we see tremendous uh, growth in people's uh, consumption and their focus shifting from you know, buying just physical goods for consumption to services, mm -hmm. uh, from owning something to experience something. Yeah. from you know uh, uh, satisfying you know uh, uh, just the daily needs to yeah. emotional and and uh, spiritual needs so um, uh, all these areas uh, you know uh, would uh, or benefit uh, the areas that we, you know the, the sectors we talked about so from a macro point of view we mm -hmm. we, we, we love those and uh, these are emerging uh, in China certainly and uh, even I would say that's a worldwide phenomenon and um, uh, uh, you know Chinese market uh, actually learns very quickly um, uh, because of the penetration of the internet and mm -hmm. because just the youth is now pretty much well read, well traveled, well informed. So um, what is happens happens elsewhere, uh, you know, China uh, catches very fast, sometimes becomes a leader mm -hmm. uh, as well, often became a leader. Um, uh, so uh, we um, uh, acquired Pure Fitness uh, back uh, the end of 2018 mm -hmm. um, because we, uh, uh, sorry, to, uh, end of 2017. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we uh, felt that uh, this is such a terrific, uh, uh, you know, uh, run company with a premier brand, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, great uh, words of mouth and reputation uh, in Hong Kong, uh, and uh, to some extent in Singapore, yeah. uh, and that uh, we will um, be able to bring this 
to China mm -hmm. uh, and set a very high standard in the industry and uh, people uh, you know, appreciate such a premium uh, service uh, right. and brand. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, we, we were a gen, uh, joint venture partner with mm -hmm. IMAX uh, uh, you know, many years ago uh, uh, and uh, been building a successful business in China, rolling out uh, IMAX theaters in China uh, uh, to many, many cities. And uh, it's been proven that uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the Chinese consumers really like uh, and appreciate and willing to pay for a premium uh, consumer brand and mm -hmm. its services. So uh, that's uh, a reason for us to um, uh, you know, uh, you know, acquire uh, and work with the terrific management of Pure Fitness uh, in Hong Kong to expand that to in the greater China. China area. Very nice to know. Um, mm. So Frank, you are a role model for many financial entrepreneurs who want to attain the financial success you know, in their career. And, and then you, are also, you also very well balance your family life with your professional life. What would your advice be mm. to all those younger entrepreneurs who are looking to be the next Frank Dang? Um, I'm still trying to be uh, very well balanced. I wouldn't say that I have done a very good job uh, there, but uh, certainly conscious about it. I think being an entrepreneur um, requires a few very important qualities. One is uh, to be able to have um, perseverance, mm -hmm. uh, uh, to be able to hang on and uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, stick to what you want to do and uh, keep your dream, and uh, you know despite all the difficulties, challenges, uncertainties, and setbacks. Right. So um, having a balanced life actually helps you uh, mm -hmm. with that. Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, my wife is very supportive of me, and uh, my kids uh, is very supportive of me. And, uh, you know, by spending time with them, I also gain energy and positivity mm -hmm. uh, and uh, allow me to be able to better deal with difficulties. The second quality I think is also very important in uh, being a successful entrepreneur uh, is um, uh, to be able to uh, integrate resources, to be able to uh, have access to, to be able to build uh, uh, you know, uh, a good network around you so that uh, you, know, you can um, benefit from this uh, network to advance the, the, the business as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, Having um, a good balance uh, and the ability to uh, to meet a lot of different talented people, very interesting people, very good people, mm -hmm. uh, uh, to be able to build that network, uh, 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 you know, is uh, has uh, been very helpful to my business. How has Hong Kong shaped your personal journey? Um, Hong Kong played a very important part of my life. In fact, mm -hmm. I have been now living in Hong Kong longer than I lived uh, anywhere else. Okay. Um, uh, uh, so uh, uh, I think Hong Kong is a very international, metropolitan and diversified city uh -huh. uh, and uh, have a very strong rule of law. Uh, that's where, why, why the finance industry has, has been prospering here uh, mm -hmm. because um, the, the fundamentally um, when you look at the finance industry, uh, it is about uh, you know, operating in a very uh, predictable and recognizable uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, regulatory and legal environment. Yeah. So, so Hong Kong is very unique about it, and it's also very free market. So, uh, you know, the uh, uh, the, the free you know, there's free exchange, and there was um, uh, you know free funds flow, and that's uh, very essential for financial industry. And um, uh, uh, it's just a very livable city. Uh, you know, good food, and uh, you know, um, everything is very convenient. So, uh, uh, you know, from, a, from a, a family and personal point of view, it, it's also a lot of fun, right? So, so I think people like to live here. So with all these qualities attracts the financial industry, I think it will continue to be a magnet for, for the financial industry. So what's next for Frank? Where do you see yourself in the next five years? I think I'll continue to be here. <laughs> and uh, I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of exciting opportunities. Yes. Uh, you know, we've been expanding our China offices uh, 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 very quickly, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, try to attract and uh, build a very uh, strong, talented team there. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I spent a lot of time in uh, in mainland China myself. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I think uh, you know the strategy of focusing on the rising 
consumption in China, mm -hmm. uh, to be able to help uh, rising companies in China to do well, um, uh, to be able to uh, you know uh, help international brands uh, to do very well in China. Those are very long te term themes uh, mm -hmm. that will continue to play out, and uh, we think there's a lot of potential. So I, I don't think uh, there's going to be dramatic changes in terms mm -hmm. of how we look at things. One thing we are noticing and uh, it, uh, will be changing uh, and continue to, to evolve is this whole online offline integration mm -hmm. that is happening very fast in China, which is potentially leading the world. So um, how we think about uh, you know some of the very essential tra traditional demand, yes. uh, consumer demand, but satisfied and delivered by very different ways yes. is fascinating and, uh, and that's something we continue to learn. So, all right, are you ready for a rapid fire question round? Sure. That's getting to know Frank's Hong Kong story in a bit more fun way. So your way of having fun with friends and family in Hong Kong? Having a big dinner, uh, lots of food and wine. Okay. Your idea of a romantic date in Hong Kong? Well. My idea for a romantic dinner is go to perhaps a French restaurant uh, with candlelight dinner. My wife's uh, idea of romantic dinner would be going to a Chinese hot pot restaurant. Okay, all right. And what's your favorite casual and final dining choice in Hong Kong? Um, I like many choices. Uh, uh, veranda is very nice for me and uh, Seva in Central also. Okay, and for your casual? Casual Cui Hua is uh, uh, Cui Hua. Is, Cui Hua, uh, the Cha Cha Ten. Yes. Okay. Yes. What was the last time you did something for the first time in Hong Kong? Uh, that would be a few years ago. I uh, took my kids to the flower market uh, in Mang Mong Kok. Okay. Uh, that is uh, really fascinating for me and for the kids. We bought a lot of uh, plants and okay. uh, came back and grew them. That was a lot of fun. What's your most favorite cultural activity of Hong Kong? Um, we uh, go to sometimes go to these uh, concerts. Uh, uh, there are some amazing concerts that come to Hong Kong from time to time. Yeah. Okay. And three words that describes Frank's Hong Kong life. Um, energetic, uh, good food, um, lots of friends. <laughs> I, I don't know, it's not three words. <laughs> That's fine. What are you most proud of as a Hong Konger? Um, Entrepreneurship, I think people generally are just very adaptive mm -hmm. uh, and, um, uh, and uh, has been proven historically to deal with all kinds of different challenges, mm -hmm. incredibly uh, resilient. And uh, I, I learned um, in the last 23 and a half years here uh, that spirit. What would you tell the global business leaders? You know, why should they engage with Hong Kong? Uh, Terrific infrastructure, mm -hmm. um, uh, great service attitude, uh, generally a very, uh, you know, open society. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What would you tell the seven billion people of the world? Why should they visit Hong Kong? Great food. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, thank you so much, Frank, for coming to our show. And we wish you all the very best in all your future endeavors. Thank you, Jaya. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Stay tuned for our next episode of Dreams, Passion and Your Hong Kong Story, where we bring you yet another fascinating story from this wonderful land, Hong Kong.